This video content is strictly for educational purposes only. All demonstrations, techniques, and information provided in this video are meant to help you understand cybersecurity better. We strongly advise against using any of this information for illegal activities or unethical practices. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Welcome back. We are going to explore yet another tool, this time for web application testing again. This one is a wasp zap. It's one of my more favorite tools because uh, it just gives a lot of information. It's very, very good at what it does. Uh, and it provides us with a lot of information for web application security testing. So I like to show up my web, uh, or I should say my lab setup. I've got my Kali box, my virtual machine running right there. Uh, I've got Keoptrix 3 running in the background. And as you can see, both of those are operational. My Kali is running on host only. So it is sandboxed properly. So is this one, you can see here. And if they're not, if they're on two different networks and you're trying to follow along, it won't work. It won't work. All right, so we need to find our IP address. Now, I already know what it is, but we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna go through the motions. I'm gonna do a quick in-map, SN. Well, let's do it right. Let's do an IF config right off the gate. You can see I'm at 192.168.56.101. I'm gonna run that quick in-map scan, just like I always do. And here you go. We're doing that last octet with that slash 24 to look through all zero through 255 IP. That's 256 IP addresses in total because you count the zero. Uh, and it's going to go through. It's going to quickly identify the IP address for my for my Keoptrix 3 so that we can run this test. Uh, it shouldn't take long. It shouldn't take long. It's just a ping sweep. Uh, obviously, not a command we want to be doing in an open network if we can all help it. But for today, for what we're doing, it's not a big deal. Now, unlike what I would normally do, where if I was actually trying to get some more information about this, I would go through in map uh, and I would do some some pretty rigorous scans against it to find out as much information I could. I'd also maybe explore the web page associated with it and do all that. But we're just going to show off. We're just going to show off the tool today. So I know it's on 102. We can see it here 192.168.56102. So let's get started with this. I can either get a WhatsApp through going to that Cali icon in the top left. And then I could just type in OWASP. Oh, not going to be there. It's under Zap, I think. There it is, Zap. I could run it that way. Or, or I can just open up a terminal, which is what you should be doing. And when I open up this little icon, I'm going to type in that OWASP-Zap, and that's going to give me the tool. That's why I thought it was OWASP, but that's OK. I'm using the command line more often than not. It's going to go in. It's going to start to boot up the process. And then we get this nice little GUI interface. This may take a second. This may take a second to get up and going. Uh, I would give it some time, though, because it is a GUI-based interface. Uh, makes it a little bit better, right? So I can do yes, persistent, yes, persistent session, bytes, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to go with no. I'm just going to go with no. I want to do uh, an automated scan. So I'm just going to click on the automated scan right there. And from here, I want to identify, of course, the URL, which is going to be that 192.168.56.102. And we want to be able to that. Traditional spider, uh, a spider allows us to go through and identify all the, well, it's the subdomains, right? It's the extensions. It's everything associated with that URL. And it literally goes through and starts just searching through that web application, through that web page, and finding as much information as it possibly can. It looks for things like resources. It looks for additional web pages. Uh, it's really just a, a crawler that goes through the website and it gathers as much data as it possibly can. Uh, and it's pretty common. I love I love having the spider, to be honest. It, it really just makes my life easier. And I'll show you in a minute why that is important. Now, on the spider, you can see here that I've got two types of rows. I've got processed, which provides me kind of the information. And what green means is that it went through and it processed this extension or this website uh, properly. And it didn't have any issues. If you'll see the red one, the red one means that we had some problems. We had some errors. Uh, maybe it doesn't come up correctly. Uh, as it was going through, it identified that as being a potential uh, problem of actually getting information. Not inf not problem as there's a problem with the website, but a problem as in uh, the tool couldn't go through it. And that's with the regular spider. Now, you probably saw this Ajax spider right here. And you're probably wondering, OK, what's the difference between the Ajax spider versus the regular spider? Well. The regular spider goes through and does its thing like anything else. Well, the Ajax spider is more concerned about problems with uh, Java, 
would be a good example. Uh, a lot of web applications, a lot of websites, they rely on Java for a lot of different things. And the Ajax Spider really goes through and looks through those websites from that, uh, from that Java kind of point of view. So where our regular spider came in and did things from a synchronous point of view, our Ajax spider comes in from an asynchronous point of view, meaning it's going through the system dynamically, which also means that instead of having a stale site, it's going through and processing it as the site moves forward. So as the site uploads, as it moves forward, we can see that on Ajax spider of what's going on. Now, you'll notice that my scan switched over to active scan, and this is providing me some detail on what's going on through Git and Post. Uh, I can see the timestamp associated with it. I can see the RTT, the reason, and then the code. If you remember, we've got that 200, that 301, that 500. All of those provided us some good information associated with the specific scan. So all of this kind of goes into Ajax where it really provides us, or I shouldn't say Ajax. All of this really comes into play with understanding what's going on with this website. And it is incredibly thorough. So we've talked about ActiveScan, we talked about Ajax, we talked about Spider. Let's move over to alerts. I want to point out that this is my true love of why I like OWASP Zap when it comes to web vulnerability scanning. Uh, we can see at the very top, it kind of forms it for us, and it says, here's the worst, and it's red, then orange, then yellow, then blue. And we can go down the pipeline, and we can say, okay, uh, SQL injection. I click on it, it tells me the URL, it tells me the risk, how confident it is that this is actually taking place in the website, where the perimeter is. In this case, it's the web page. Uh, it tells me the CWD ID. It also tells me the source. Uh, and I go through and it says, hey, description, SQL injection may be possible. And then other information, the query time is controllable using parameter value, which caused a request to take 15,000 milliseconds when the original unmodified query value for the log sign took zero milliseconds. Solution, do not trust the client side input, even if the client side is validation is in place. Now, obviously not the best, but it does kind of go through and pose some issues. Uh, and you'll notice that I've got a little drop down right there. Sometimes those drop down will tell us and I can see the posts associated with it. And it just provides me a wealth of information. You'll notice that I have a server side code injection. That one just popped up. And again, it goes through the Dame process of telling me everything that's going on. Up on the top, we can see the original header and what's going on, just like much might, you might see out of a Wireshark, and it gives us a lot of good information. We can see 200 OK, we can see when it was done, we can see the server type, Apache 2.28, uh, and there's just a lot of great information. And then we can see the body of the text right here if I wanted to jump into that. This is why I like um, a WhatsApp. I mean, you just can't beat what the information is provided on this type of platform. And it really just lays it out really, really well. Uh, this is why more often than not, if I'm trying to do something quick, I'm gonna do Nikto. Like if I just wanna know real quick what Nikto is telling me, I'd go down that process. But if I want in-depth information that's going to really kind of provide me some insight into what's going on with the website, uh, especially on a lot of the errors that we saw with this particular box where we had all those different errors, this is just fantastic. It just gives me all that great information. Uh, and I can really go through and decide which one I want to pick on first. Where Nikto was kind of like, well, here it is. And kind of figure it out on your own what's going on. Now, it did give us uh, CVEs on some of it. <coughs> but I can realize right off the bat that this has got an SQL problem with it. Uh, and so I really love this, right? So it's definitely something I would take a look at. I also want to point out that here's the request, and here's the response, and here's the requester. And so all of this tool and information is available to us. Uh, so that's OWASP Zap. It's definitely something I would take a look at. I would definitely, I would definitely bring this to a CTF competition. Uh, Nikto is great, and I like Nikto, and it's it's a definite tool that I would utilize, right? But this is so much better. I love this tool. Uh, it's fantastic for identifying those web vulnerabilities and going through the process. All right. Anyway, I hope this was educational. Definitely take a look. Definitely go through the motions and start uh, seeing what the outputs are and go through it. It will help you learn if you start going through the process, right? Uh, as always, if you found this educational, if you found it worth your time, I'd appreciate that like, that subscribe, and of course, that bell icon. My name is Dr. K, and we will see you next time. That's it for now. Take it easy.